it's Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity with your succulent tip of the day. And those of you that follow closely, remember how excited I was about this little crest cutting that Susan Auk gave me. Um, well, you know, it happens. This was completely hardened off when she gave it to me. I did not water it. And yet it's still just rotted to nothing. I mean, there's one little tiny piece that's still viable here that I'll be clipping off to see if I can salvage. But, you know, 80% of the plant, it's just, it's toast. So, unfortunately, it does happen. But that inspired something something new. Now, this Susan Ock pot is so special because of the scalloping around the edges. So I don't want to do an arrangement in here that's going to cover that up or detract from that. And some of you commented when I potted up this little agave in this other Susan Ock that it was too small for the pot. And, you know, you weren't wrong. This is a small agave. This isn't going to get much bigger than this. So... I thought, okay, I have this gorgeous Cristata. What if I were to put the Cristata in this pot and put this little agave in this pot? Let's see if this is going to work, okay? So I, I tried to salvage as much, as much of this brown tan colored rock as I could because I love it and I want to reuse it. So I've got these little piles of rock on each side. I scooped some of the dirt out and put it into this pot and it's it's quite dry so yeah i don't know you know about that about that rot um other than to say a long time ago like the last yeah. time you left i noticed yeah it's it been rotting. this has been happening for months and that's what typically occurs with rot it's a sometimes a very very slow process so um okay so now i'm going to take this adorable little agave and pop it back in you'll note that the top of the root ball is pretty much even with the edge of the pot and i think that this just showcases this plant so beautifully it feels kind of like a whirly kind of sensation with the leaves how they present and then the edges of this pot also mirror that that feel so this feels very co-simpatico to me. So now I've got an option. I can backfill with soil or I can just backfill with rock. And because this is an agave and it is extremely drought tolerant, I mean extremely, it doesn't need much water at all. And I'm not worried about air pockets or anything like that. I don't think I'm gonna backfill with any more soil. I think I'm just gonna take my pebbles and just go ahead and backfill with the rock. And what this is gonna do is create a really, really porous environment for this little agave. So that when I do water it, even if it's an accident because I'm watering something else, you know how that happens sometimes, I won't worry about it staying wet or getting, you know, having the same fate as that little cristata. So don't hesitate, if you have a cactus or a really, really tough plant that, can, that you know can tolerate a lot of drought, you don't need a whole lot of soil in your pot. You can just backfill with a lot of rock, creating a more porous environment. So all of you in Texas and Florida and some places where you get a lot more rainfall, that's a really, really good tip for you. So how are we feeling about this pairing? I love it hope you guys do too okay so that's handled now i'm not going to water this guy or worry about watering him uh he'll get hit with the hose when i feel like it now this euphorbia a uh, can african candelabra cristata you're probably thinking well gosh laura this is not going to fit is it and the answer is no not if i wanted to plant it intact but guess what not going to do that. Sometimes a plant is just too good. You have this fantastic pot and you want to make it work. It, I am not going to plant this Cristata as a cutting. We all saw what happened with that. 
but cautionary tale, but I am going to, to push off a lot of the soil from the top. This is just loose soil, no big deal. Kind of, you know, ease, ease some of this dirt off. I'm not, you know, I haven't cut any roots. I haven't bothered any roots. You can see how matted they are at the bottom here. Let's see how much of this I can loosen up. This will absolutely not hurt the plant one little bit. All right, now what I have discovered is that I've got a really matted, fairly mature root system here. Now, yes, I could take all of these roots and put them in a real messy ponytail and shove them in this pot, but I am not, I'm not gonna do that. I'll tell you why. For one thing, I don't want this plant to grow. I like it this size. I don't want it to get big. So I'm not concerned about stunting the growth by trimming the roots. So I'm just gonna clean up a little bit. I'm just gonna take and trim off some of these roots, I think. There we go. It's like I attached two butter knives together. I need to sharpen my clippers. Okay. Okay, so this is how I'm gonna stage it in this pot. It's really, really, really pretty. This pot looks so under the sea, doesn't it? And since this Cristata looks like something under the sea too, I think it's a really, really good pairing. Now, the colors are rather complementary, aren't they? The green of the plant and the green of the pot. So I'm going to work with top dressing to create a stop, if you will, for the eye. I have these black, this black pea gravel, which is going to lend a really, really nice contrast and give the eye somewhere to rest between plant and pot. So both can be appreciated. We are still, you know, at the very, very end of summer. It's, it's like almost fall now. It's still a little bit too soon for me to really get out and tackle anything in my yard because here in San Diego, September, notoriously is a very hot month. So even though we're experiencing some slightly cooler days and my aeoniums are starting to open up a little bit, uh, I am not fooled. I have a suspicion it's gonna get hot. So this is the time to just get in the shade and work on potting up some specimens and getting your plant fix that way at this time of year. Okay, and I've got this really cool piece of lava rock that I'm going to stage in here too because it's fun. So, as tempting as it is to dive into your hot masses of stuff that's desiccated and dried out and leggy and la, remember, it's only going to be a few more weeks of heat and then we can do that. But in the meantime, just do what you can make some cute arrangements, make sure that you provide them with ample shade and protection from the heat and resist watering until the soil is completely dry. This has been Laura Eubanks of Design for Serenity with your succulent tip of the day. Bye guys.